Okay. All right. So, um, Russ, if you, I mean, uh, Wes, if you give us kind of a countdown, and then, um, then that will be your okay. And can you, um, are you able to see him good? Everybody's good? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta hear you. Five, four, three, two, one. Hi everyone and welcome to our live Twitter town hall. I'm Morgan. And I'm Ross and we're gonna be discussing the impacts of social media, whether or not it's benefiting us or being a negative impact on our lives. And I'm really excited to introduce our special guest today. This is Alice Holloway. She received her Bachelor of Arts in Public Relations from the University of South Alabama. She then went on to get her MBA from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. She currently is the CEO and Executive Problem Solver at Sky Connect, and she is also currently a Professor of Marketing at Sanford University. Welcome, Mrs. Holloway. Thank you so much. We're just going to be asking you a few questions this morning, so Ross is going to go ahead and get us started with that. Okay. Yeah, so would you say in the long term, do you believe social media is benefiting or n more of a negative impact on the youth who have grown up in an age surrounded by it? Well, you know, I always think information is power. I think it's important that we have these platforms and tools that allow us to be internationally connected. Years and years ago, you know, we had the encyclopedia way before anybody, you know, any of us were born here, right? Uh, but no, seriously, uh, when the encyclopedias were around, you only could get information from books. And they were dated because once you create a book, the book is on the shelf for 15 years, sometimes 20. And so things change over those times. So I believe that the age of social media is perfect for where we are right now. Mm -hmm. I believe it's helped us to be empowered with information. I believe it's brought us together across the country. I believe it has given us an opportunity to really be free to express ourselves. And that can be good and not so good in some cases. But I think it's a great opportunity for society to have this, these platforms they can just basically be themselves mm -hmm. and communicate all over the world. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that social, does social media affect the social skills of generations who have been raised in an environment, environment where it's constantly, when they're constantly surrounded by it? That's a good question. Um, I, think, I think a little bit. I think the social skills, um, we, we've kind of digressed a little bit there and, uh, and regressed, if you will. And so I think that we have to keep in mind that we're still social people. We're still made for relationships. If you think about you know, how, how God made us, um, he made us to be in relationships. He made us to be connected to people. And that's why we have these connections with families. And so I think it's important that we use social media as a tool, mm -hmm. but not the only way that we communicate. So I think that it has, it has had some impact on us socially, yes. I even think in the way we communicate verbally, um, you know, and even written words have been skewed a little bit based on social media because it's really quick. You know, it's quick and it's, it's, it's impactful, but it's really short. And so unless you're writing a long formatted piece of document or, or a paper of some sort, you don't really get a chance to express yourself fully. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's an opportunity for us to go back a little bit. I mean, um, before we were having this social um, conversation this morning, someone sent me a note and said, yes, please talk about this, because they were at a dinner, and there were four people at a table, and she said everybody was on their phone, and the only thing they said to each other was pass the salt. Mm -hmm. And they were thinking, she was, she was thinking that that was just something that was uncommon in her generation, in, in, in fact. And so I think that if we get to a point where we don't get a chance to share and have these dialogues, I think we miss something. I think there's something interesting about the human dynamic that we have to engage and connect. And that's why I think these social channels have been great, but also have had some limitations on how we interconnect socially. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought up that example of that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking when everyone's on their phone yeah. and not looking at each other. Mm -mm. There's no eye-to-eye -eye contact. Yeah. There's no facial movement. It's just pretty stoic. And so um, I think it can aid to helping us in relationships, but it certainly shouldn't be the only way that we engage in relationships. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So with the accessibility everyone has to social media nowadays, would you say, especially for the youth, would it lead to any overexposure? Well, you know, I actually noticed on one of my social platforms that um, it gave you a time limit. So it'll give you a reminder that you've been on it too long, and which is interesting. Uh, I also think that based on the, the social exposure, uh, there is some ex exposure and overexposure. Uh, I think everything should have a button that allows you to 
say, oh, I don't want this content or I do want this content. Mm -hmm. So I do think there should be some opportunities to disclose um, whether or not you want this information or not. I love the way you can say, hey, unfollow somebody, but they will never know it. I like that mm -hmm. part of it. I also like the part that if it allows us to, uh, to want more information, we can get that too. But I do think you have to be mindful. This is an open platform. This is basically the super information highway. Mm -hmm. So anything is out there to be seen and viewed mm -hmm. and watched over and over again. And I'm not always sure that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Do you think that social media positively or negatively affects the productivity and growth of people, especially in the more of the younger generation? Well, you know, think about if you're at work. When you're at work, you really want to be at work. You want your whole self there. You want your whole mind there. And so I do think it affects productivity. Uh, if you're on your phone and you're supposed to be, if, say if you're a nurse and you're in that area and you're supposed to be working on a patient, you don't want your phone to be distracting and you take a call and then now you're, what you're working with the patient and they, they get sick because of your inattention. Or you don't want to be a pilot, for example, and you're flying a plane and, oh my goodness, my phone rings mm -hmm. and I've got to take the call. No, 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 you need to fly the plane. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you really want people to have their full attention where they are. Definitely. It's basically, you know, like in, in the university environment, we really want students to, to focus on what we're communicating to them because we feel we have valuable information and we mm -hmm. feel it's a two-way street. So in our classroom in 405, we actually use our phones, you know, we actually use our technology and we're encouraged to do that. However, we don't want you doing it when I'm lecturing or right. in that in that case. But we do think it's important to have those tools available because we do want you to be social. But we just need to mind, be mindful of if you're at work, be at work. If you're at school and you're in this environment, be in the environment. Be in the moment. Enjoy it. Definitely. Mm -hmm. It makes me think of, too, personally, sometimes I have a hard time if I have my phone near me and I'm trying to study. Yeah, and it's it'll so ding. distracting. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'll ding and you have to just, you know, just turn it over and see. And that, exactly. that can be very, um, very distracting for mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Do you think being in the marketing sector, it's a little bit more prevalent with just coworkers than people in that industry? It is, but we still are in the work industry, and people have an expectation that, yeah, because you happen to be in a social media age that you grew up in, it doesn't mean we are adopting all of those, um, those principles. There's still a principle of when you're on an interview, you don't want to be on an interview, and you guys know this, and your phone rings and you answer your phone when someone's trying to interview you for a job, you know, yeah. because they realize you're not paying attention to me. Mm -hmm. And what happens, the phone takes all of our attention. I actually am very interested in, in basically how do we um, kind of multicast. I know that people do that. I'm not quite sure that's the best way for us to, to be productive in a work environment or a school environment. So I think we have to put our, our full mind on what we're doing. It's basically like driving. Mm -hmm. You know, you think we can all multitask and do it well, but not really. Not really. We should be uh, looking at how we can be more productive in the environment that we're currently in and be in the moment for at least a little while. Um, you've kind of already touched on this, but what do you think the like, biggest positive aspect of social media is and that it has on people? I think now we can connect globally. Mm -hmm. I think that the fact of what it has on people is giving them a voice. And, you know, we do know that there are situations where people are, are bullied, which, you know, is a negative. Mm -hmm. But we also do know people who found their, their family member and they found their, um, their key, you know, advisors or someone in yeah. their family over the years simply because of social media mm -hmm. and the connectivity of that. So I'm really excited that we've been able to, um, to have that dialogue mm -hmm. and discuss that because it is important that we keep social media as options for us. And I love the fact that all the platforms, you know, we're using Twitter for right now, we're, we're using Facebook, we're mm -hmm. using Pinterest, we're using uh, Snapchat, Instagram, all these different platforms. And to me, I think that's exciting, but every one of them has their positives and negatives. So many social media platforms nowadays, would you say it can be a bit consuming to people's lives in all aspects, social, work, and just at home? Oh yes, you know, it's funny because people say that you look so much better on social media because it's staged, the lighting is just right, the microphone is great, the filters are amazing. Uh, and so yeah, I do think that there's a, um, there's a challenge to balance my real life with my social media life. And, uh, and so I think that that's what challenges people because everybody wants to be you know, in the know. They right. want to be in the know. They want to be impacted. They want to be engaged. They want to be, um, you know, in the in the moment, if you mm -hmm. will, of all the activities. And sometimes that that can be challenging to keep to keep that balance. Mm -hmm. 
you know. So I think I think it does allow us options, but it's um it's not the only option for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite social media platform that you use on the regular? Well, you know, it's funny. I'm starting to use more Instagram stories, mm. and uh, I'm liking those because I'm using those. I've actually done a few boomerangs. Uh, I think <laughs> I think that's kind of fun to do those. Um, Facebook, I, I still tend to use Facebook for connecting with families, mm -hmm. uh, but I do love Twitter. I love the polling on Twitter. I love the activity associated with Twitter. I think it allows us some flexibility that you don't get on all the other platforms. Um, Instagram allows me to show pictures and without saying much. And the little heart is just perfect, you know, if you want to like it or comment it. Mm -hmm. So it sounds pretty easy that I can just scroll through my photos and my carousel and find something interesting. So I found all kind of products um, on those social channels. So I think I have a lot, yeah. but I believe my Instagram stories are the ones that are kind of interesting and fun. I agree. I really like Instagram, too. Really? That's probably my favorite as well. Okay. Yeah. What, what do you like, Ross? Um... <laughs> this, is, this is gonna get some criticism from guys. Uh -oh. Probably Pinterest. Pinterest, okay. You know, I like I like a guilty pleasure is cooking, and I really can't find like except for those really bad recipes, except mm. on like Facebook maybe. Uh -huh. So Pinterest has always just been like my guilty pleasure to find oh. recipes and such. I will say you probably got some guys who like Pinterest as well. I think it's not 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 too bad. So you're okay. You're good. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Definitely. So that is all the questions that we have. Do you guys have any? questions that um, from our audience that we could ask? Yeah, <clears throat> we have a really good question from Ashley Henson, and it's, do you think that social media benefits or harms the job search and application process? Ooh, that's a good Can question. I get that question to you guys? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I, think it, um, I think it aids in the process, actually, because people are able mm -hmm. to uh, find mm -hmm. information out about employers. They can find information about those who are employed at those companies. They can find salary information. Uh, you can find recruiters who are heavily recruiting for uh, for this platform, and uh, and allows them to basically have candidates who can be seen all over the place. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so I think I think it's a great opportunity. So, Ashley, thanks for asking that question for us. Yes. I think you can use it to um, to help aid in your job search. We have another question from Nate, and it's which social media do you believe has the most negative impact or has been the most harmful to society as a whole? Mm -hmm. Ooh, um, that's a good one. You know, I don't quite know if there's one that takes the brunt of them all. Of course, we always think about Facebook because it was an earlier adopter early mm -hmm. on, so you would expect they would get a lot of those issues, but it's like anything else. You know, the first two or three companies in a, in a market have to kind of go through all the challenges, and then it gets easier for everyone else. And so I don't think there's one that's better than the other or worse than the other. I just think that the earlier person or company, if you will, in this case, Facebook, has had to bear a lot of those challenges. So who wrote that question? Uh, that was Nate. Nate, that okay. Question. Very good. Thanks uh, for, for the asking. And similar tone, Joy Kane wants to know what platform will stand the test of time. Do you have any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, I think, I think we're never going to get away from pictures. I think we always want pictures of, of activities, of family outings and gatherings and things we do here on campus. So I think we'll never get away from photographs. I think there will always be something that will be a part of us. Now, and videos are taking more of an opportunity to be showcased. So um, I think that we'll never get away from the pictures. I think we always like to be seen and, you know, in a fun way and showcase where we are in our lifetime. So I connect with my family who lives in Texas. I connect with my family who lives in Mobile. Uh, I was on the phone with my cousin in Atlanta and in California, all because of social media. So it's a great platform, I feel, to expand. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, Rachel Henry asks, how, how have you seen social media affect your business? What is the biggest change you've seen in recent years? Well, because I am an entrepreneur as well, you know, kind of part-time, um, and teach here at Sanford you know, in structure of marketing, I believe social media has benefited my business tremendously. Uh, I have received um, information and insight from jobs on Instagram. I've received information and job opportunities on LinkedIn. I've received, hey, give me a call on Messenger for Facebook. So it's benefited my business greatly. So I would highly encourage anyone who's interested in, in using that platform for that to do so. The Messenger really gets right to you. You know, it's, it's, I, at first I was a little bit skeptical. I thought, hmm, this is a bit much, it's too invasive. They can get to me right away, but people can also see if you're online based on your, your filters mm -hmm. or based on your settings. So you have to be mindful of your privacy. I do not check in though. 
Um, so I don't do the check-in feature. So um, that's something that I feel that sometimes I just don't want you to know where I am. Mm -hmm. But I do want you to know I'm involved. Definitely. So that's how I would answer that question. So switching gears a little, um, at password is Lane wants to know what you think <laughs> when people take a break from social media. Lane, that's a great question. I think you're going to stump me on this one. Um, I think there is something to be said for kind of taking a break away from all of the noise in the world. Um, I'm not quite sure how long you take a break for, but I do think it's okay to just to kind of take a, a break, a vacation. Everybody needs a vacation from something, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it happens to be. So I do think that's a positive piece to take a break from that and just get away from it. So, uh, Lane, that's a really good question. Uh, I probably won't take a break from it no time soon. <laughs> so it's kind of a part of my life, and I think it's something that's a part of a lot of our lives. It's kind of every day. Do you take a break from social media? I do. I actually sometimes, well, the past few summers I've worked at camp, so there we can't have our phones. And so I do, it's really nice because I don't have Wi-Fi or and I'm not able to get on my social media. So that has been honestly really nice to kind of take a step mm -hmm. back. I did take a break a few weeks ago just for, it was about, it was almost two weeks that I just kind of deleted Instagram off of my phone mm -hmm. just to help with studying and so that I wouldn't get so distracted um, and I think also it just is so easy to compare yourself to other people's lives so just to kind of like take a step back and right. keep things in perspective a little bit and you survive yeah <laughs> <laughs> you survive <laughs> that's great okay so Ross have you taken a break in a while I always I never end up taking a break from all social media at once it'll usually be a certain app like snapchat especially okay. I'll end up just deleting for a few mm -hmm months up until around June I hadn't had it for about a year and a half wow just kind of got rid of it realized I didn't need it mm -hmm. and just kind of continued to not use it I got back on it just it's an easy way to like keep up with people who I like need to talk to but not a ton mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but Twitter especially Twitter and snapchat are usually the ones that I always end up getting rid of mm -hmm. ah, okay. I'll usually get rid of Instagram but it's most of the time something that I don't I wouldn't say consumes a lot but I'll catch myself off and just maybe sitting in, at work, just kind of, if there's not much happening, I'll catch myself just scrolling through the explore mm, page, just finding yeah. stuff that I don't need. So wow, okay. Thank getting you. rid of it wouldn't hurt. Wouldn't hurt, okay. Okay, uh, do we, we probably have, a, somebody else wants to have a question. Yeah, oh, yeah, we question. do. Um, for those following the chat, they want to know how best to balance using social media for personal objectives and also for professional use. That's a great question. Um, so I think there's two ways. I think for professional, you certainly need to have a professional picture, a professional information about you know your, your social presence. Because people, that's the first thing they do, even when they're on the phone with you, is go to your social site to see how you look and what you are you know, presenting and, and supporting. On the business, on the personal side, you can be a little casual and have fun and everything, but I'm always mindful of what happens five years from now. When you're not in college and you're done with all the schooling and you're just in the world, people do make impressions about you even when you don't think they do. And so those are things that are really important for us to be mindful. So I think you have to have a professional um, guess, portfolio, if you will, mm -hmm. and a personal one because you need both of them. And they, they, will, they will overlap, and invariably they will overlap, but you have to be mindful. Everything you post is never really deleted mm -hmm. forever. We think it is, but... I, I, I'm a little nervous about that. So be careful about what you take in the first place because um, we, we've seen some, some good and some bad on that. So um, that was a really good question too. I think we have one more question before we finish. And this is from Anna. And the question is, do you feel that the screen time limit on iPhones is a helpful application? And does it really help people stay active on social media while remaining <coughs> present in face-to-face -face interactions? That's a great question. That is a great question. Um, I don't know if the screen time really helps anyone but parents. <laughs> I, I, think, I think screen time, parents regulate it a little bit more and they may look at that. I think that we are self-regulating ourselves as we get to be adults and it's hard to manage it unless you're very, very disciplined. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're not always super disciplined. It's like if you want to have a really you know, heavy calorie meal today and not tomorrow, you have to simply make that decision to make that choice. And for example, like Morgan and Ross mentioned, they took take a break from social media. They just said, I'm, I'm done with it for a little while. Um, even though I have, I've done that about two years ago, I haven't done it of, of late. But I think it does say something for us. So I do think that we have to be able to balance it 
out a bit more as well. And so that's a, that's a really good question too. These are some great questions. Yeah, mm -hmm. really wow. good okay. points of discussion. Yeah. Are, they, yeah, they are. But I do, I think social media can be balanced though. And I think you can use it um, beneficial in both your personal life and your professional life. Mm -hmm. All right. Maybe one more question. One more question. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, you have to talk yeah, because I, I think that the questions really help us to dig deep into the topic. Yeah. Last one. So Wes wants to know what you think if social media t is a tool that can be used for good or bad. Uh, I think it can be used for good. I also think it can be used for bad. Um, there are there are people out there who just you know have um, great things to share, great business opportunities, great ideas, great creative opportunities, just great things happening in their life, and they want to share it, and we want to see it. So we want to be a part of it. I think there also is a side that doesn't you know have positive things to share it, mm -hmm. and use this medium as a way to either intimidate or affect other people, and we just want to be mindful of the balance of that. So we have to be able to make good decisions about what we include and internalize. For example, I don't, I'm not a scary movie person. I just don't put that in my head, yeah. you know, and so I've made that decision, <laughs> and, you know, and, yeah. and, and there's nothing about anyone else because I have a lot of friends, that's all they watch, and that's fine. Right. But I just made a decision that some things I'm not going to let enter into my psyche, and so that's how I just manage the positivity and the negativity associated mm -hmm. with social media. I just block things out that I don't want to have as part of my normal daily life. It's a great point. Yeah. And I think that brings us yeah, yeah. to the end. But thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you to our audience as well. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you audience members. We didn't have a lot of audience. <laughs>